Welcome back to Airborne Productions. Harbor Freight makes a pretty good little greenhouse. We've done a lot of work to make ours run a hydroponic setup. Let's check it out. So there are many benefits to having a hydroponic setup. It's really clean and organized, and it's also clean on the inside. When you run hydroponics, it really protects your plants and roots from getting all rotted out because the water is continuously running through it. A lot of times with a traditional setup, your roots will collect water and the water won't drain out like it should. That will cause your plants to rot and die. Using hydroponics completely remedies that problem. Harbor Freight carries a few different models, but this one in particular is 10 feet wide by 12 feet long. The greenhouse comes with a steel base for mounting, but it's not really that sturdy. So we decided to pour a little curb of concrete and bolt the aluminum straight to the concrete. That way this thing doesn't blow away at all. There's one more little stability issue that's common with these greenhouses. That's these panels. They often unclip these panels can blow away with a good gust. So we put a simple little number 10 tech screw in each panel and that's fine. The construction of this thing is pretty basic. You get your frame all set up and from there you put your panels on. Pretty straightforward. Four roof vents are included but we added these attachments that open and close based on the temperature outside. Right now they are mostly open but as it cools off at night these will close up to slightly regulate the temperature inside the greenhouse. We use some simple rock from Home Depot for the flooring. For shelving, we took cinder blocks, stacked three of them up, and used some lumber to make a little platform. We did this around the perimeter, and we did one in the middle. For the hydroponics, we simply used some perlite the middle which goes all the way down the bucket we have a line in each bucket that pumps water in we have this line out the rubber seal that flows water out connected to each one so when you do this this is pretty high up the highest point of this PVC pipe so the water will flow all the way down then the lowest point of this PVC pipe is over here. That way all the water flows completely through and dumps back into this tank. We have a float in the rear for water regulation, as well as a pump right here, which goes up into each line for each bucket. The pump is electronically controlled using the simple electronic timer. Every 15 minutes, the water will run for 60 seconds, and then it repeats. And we are feeding our plants these organic nutrients. We mocked up some misters. And we will utilize a timer. Each plant we have is organic. We have blueberries, Ozark Beauty strawberries, Sequoia strawberries, Super Sweet 100 tomatoes, Husky Cherry Red tomatoes, Juliet tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, red beefsteak tomatoes, eggplant, Japanese cucumber, purplest cucumber, cucumber variety, crookneck squash, zucchini squash, purple bell pepper, green bell pepper, orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, red bell pepper, and lastly sweet pepper. The Harbor Freight greenhouse, or any greenhouse for that matter, can be done very simply, but the hydroponic setup does have quite a few benefits. We could have simply propped up the greenhouse and buried plants in the ground, but our add-ons certainly enhance our ability to grow fruits and veggies. We will make an update video when harvest season comes around. Thanks for watching. G'day, I'm Vic, and welcome to Eco Park, where we do things differently. This is our slice of paradise. 250 mature olive trees and a big white house up here on the hill. 
our high-tech payment lab down in the town. We run a small IT business, grow alcohol, press olives, teach young geeks, <laughs> grow fruit and veg, hunt, farm chickens, and experiment. But today, we're doing hydroponics down on Geeko Farm. Hydroponics, it's a hot topic around here, usually with connotations of frondy plants and smiling, lazy-eyed young farmers. But for us, it's a source of fresh food all year round. We've been doing it for about 20 years, so we've got a fair amount of experience and spare parts. Um, but we're going to cover it now because we've moved in, we're starting up a new system, and it's a good time to show people how it's done. Hydroponics work well outdoors, but wind is a killer that will bend, break, and even blow your plants right out. So, we use a greenhouse. It's not so much to keep the plants warm, but to keep the weather off. High winds here will shove blown branches straight through a polytunnel, so we need the rigid frame and polycarbonate panels in our greenhouse. It's concreted well in, and it's a Titan 914 greenhouse with some extensions which we got from Duncan Garden Products. It's 7 metres by 2.7 metres huge, and it cost us about 3,500 New Zealand dollars. So our hydroponics system does away with soil, and pumps just the right amount of water around the system. Not too much, or the plants drown. Not too little, or the plants dry out. Uh, periodically though, we do let all the water drain away. Um, it stops the roots from rotting, and saves us a bit of electricity. Our tank has to hold enough water to drain the entire system. When you're designing a hydroponic system, start at the lowest point first, which is the drain tap on your holding tank. The pump connects at roughly the same level, maybe a little higher up to let the crap settle to the bottom of the tank. Once the pumps pump the water around the system, it needs to drain freely into the tank, otherwise your runs will back up and flood make sure that the ends of the hoses aren't actually in the water. A ball cock valve lets the water in, topping up what the plants use. The pump is a 100 watt mains pump, capable of pumping 6 litres a minute up to a 2 metre head. As the pipes have frictional losses, you need more head than you think. Thicker piping has less loss, so as we expand our system, we'll swap to this thicker 20 mm pipe throughout. The pump water goes through the thinner feeders that point into our troughs. These go down a 1 in 40 slope to the drain. The troughs always have flat bottoms uh, with the roots spreading out over a thin film of water which oxygen can get through. Round bottom troughs drown the root systems so don't use them. The plants sit in little bag baskets of clay beads to support the roots. Sometimes we use vermiculite which is basically mica popcorn. We print small pots and we buy the big ones because they're not worth printing. So that's our hydroponic system. Later, we'll cover how to add nutrients to it and we'll take a look at what plants do and don't like hydroponic systems. But for now, that's your lot on the Geco Farm. Hi, this is a quick rundown on how to set up our most basic kit. We call it the desktop model. As you can see, you get some very basic brackets, you get some random reading material which you don't really have to keep you get two hoses it's part one of the two-part nutrient solution some packing foam to go around your seedlings and of course part two of the nutrient solution we suggest you use the shorter hose for an overflow if you don't link multiple tubes together you never have to worry about that hose again and use the longer hose as a drain hose. We recommend at least fortnightly you drain out and replenish the nutrient or weekly for heavier feeders. Now you can insert the brackets into the appropriate holes. And your plant is ready to be used. Cut your foam packing into strips around 20 mil or three quarters of an inch wide. Now you can add a couple of litres of water to your planter. In concentrated form, 
calcium and phosphate tends to form a nasty brown sludge which plants can't use. So it's always best to mix the two parts separately into water. For the first two weeks all you'll need is 5 mil of each part, that's more than enough for seedlings and about all lettuce will ever need, it's a very light feeder. For the next 14 days all you have to do is top up the planter with fresh water and then at the end of the 14 days you can drain it out and put in more nutrients. The planter only needs to be filled up to the level of the overflow hose. If you've raised your own seedlings in a very porous mix, you only have to wash the seedlings in a bucket of water, wrap the foam around the seedling and stick it in the hole. If you've bought punnets, they may be root bound, in which case you might find a hard spray with a hose nozzle might be more effective in cleaning the roots. These were put down on September the 18th and about three weeks later we could start harvesting leaves.